Today's topic is bold central elements as you learn how to think like a designer with beads, baubles, and jewels. Beads, Bobbles, and Jewels has been brought to you in part by Beading Daily, your jewelry making resource for how-to projects, books, magazines, DVDs, events, and online learning. Beadingdaily.com Beadalon, a manufacturer of flexible bead stringing wires, memory wire, artistic wire, stringing materials, innovative findings, and tools to help you fashion your own jewelry. Beadalon.com Create your style with Swarovski Elements. EKSuccessBrands.com forward slash create your style with Swarovski elements. Halcraft, jewelry component manufacturer. Halcraft.com. Jewel School, a division of jewelry television. JTV.com slash Jewel School. TierraCast, define your design with metal. TierraCast.com. Hi, I'm Katie Hacker, your host, and this season we're exploring ways to think like a designer as you plan your jewelry making. This season's necklaces are bold and beautiful. Today's show features lots of ideas for necklaces with bold central elements, beginning with a lesson on adding different types of bales to pendants. Now you know bales make pendants really easy to change and switch out, so let me show you a few different types of bales. These have loops that are pre-attached where you would just attach a dangle to it. This one is really nice because you can put it on and take it off to switch the necklace pendants on your necklaces. This one has a pad that you can glue onto. You'd want to rough this up with some sandpaper and then use industrial strength glue. And then this is a pinch style where it has the two posts that just fit inside the loops on a pendant. So an easy way to attach is just using a head pin. I've run a head pin through my beads here and made a basic loop. And then I'm just going to slip it onto the loop that's on the pendant bale. And this is also a removable bale, and I love the way that it has some decorative elements here on the surface of the bale as well. And then on this bale, this is a pinch bale, but you can also use it to switch out your pendants because it's so easy to do. You can do it with your fingers. So you can put a pendant on, and you just squeeze these together with your fingers, or you can use chain nose pliers or nylon jaws, and Squeeze it so that the loop is secure and make sure. Now, of course, changing it up, you could add a shell pendant and that would give it a totally different look. So this is a way that you can use different bold elements in your jewelry that's really, really easy. And the rest of today's show begins with Candy Cooper and drilling stones to make pendants with simple metal findings. Then, Molly Shaler is back with the Tangerine Tango Necklace. It's the color of the year, and this necklace with a multiple strand focal section is set to become the necklace of the year, too. Then, we'll use banding pliers to make focal elements with wire expert Wyatt White. So let's meet Candy. I'm here with metalsmith Candy Cooper, and today we're talking about bold central elements. Candy, you have a great idea for stones. I do. I actually used them in this pendant, like you can see on the, the necklace here. And where do you find them? I find them along the coast of Lake Michigan. Love it. I, they you, look so pretty when they're layered with the metal pieces. Yeah, and they're free. Are you ready to see how to make a pendant? Let's do it. Okay. So I have a little uh, grouping of stones here. The thing that you're going to need to drill holes in the actual stones themselves is a diamond drill bit. This is called a diamond core bit. Okay, and, and you have it in your flex shaft drill. I do, I'm ready to go. So I, um, you actually have to drill these stones in water, and what that does is makes it really nice and smooth and cool as you drill. So I've put a piece of board down because when I get into the actual, um, you know, through it, I don't right, want to go through my through container. Bowl, right? right. And you want to keep your drill going at a pretty good speed and just nice and steady. And some stones- You can stones, feel, right, when it goes through a hole. Well, you can feel when it pops. And I should also mention that you may need to ream out the hole a little bit more, or um, depending on what you're gonna do with it. So once I have my holes in the pieces, this now we're ready to actually use them in jewelry. 
So for these, the stones sometimes look a little matte. Um, so I've used like an alcohol ink on this one. You can layer these inks if you want to too. I can add some browns. You can see I've done this on the green one. Sure. Oh, you and just, you just put it directly on the stone. I do, but if you're nervous, just practice on the back side of your stone first. Oh, good idea. Okay, so for the one that we're making today, I've actually drilled a couple holes in. And to um, just add, you know, I love layers. Um, I've drilled a second stone here and along with a bead cap. I love you, the way that you always use bead caps in different ways. I can't get enough of spacer beads or bead caps. And I'm just using this miniature nut and screwing that onto the back. And you want to, um, you can even add a little bit of adhesive in between your layers so the pieces don't spin. Because, it, you know, we try not to use glue in jewelry making, but sometimes yeah. we have to. And sometimes, though, you might want some movement there. Right. So then you just cut that guy off. Cut that off, put your finger over so they don't um, hit you in the face. <laughs> Um, and then I've got this neat little thing called a bead liner, and these come in all different styles, but I'm just going to put a little bit of adhesive around the, um, around the hole. You have to be kind of careful here, right, because glue comes out You don't want to have too much glue. Um, and then just put a, a little bit here. So the post fits right down into the it's, hole that you just drilled. It sinks oh, right down so in nice. it. Oh, that's so nice. And it gives it a nice finished look, Definitely, right? Definitely, yes. One thing I forgot to tell you is I also, sometimes if I want the stones to look a little bit more rich, I'll add um, a matte varnish. Oh, that looks nice. Yeah, and it just kind of cleans it up and makes it look really nice and finished. Definitely. Okay, so now let's turn this um, focal pendant into an actual necklace. All right, the first so we have our pendant. We have our pendant. And um, we need to, this design has a couple different, um, it has a, it's kind of a variety. So the first thing is I've made this little chain out of these components. And I'm doing my button uh, toggle closure. Fun. So to make that leather toggle, you're just going to take a little piece of leather. And you kind of want to fit it to your button piece, like so, you know, kind of yeah, gauge it. Yeah, just so that it fits snugly but not too tight. Right. Too hard to fasten if it's tight. Right. And then I'm going to use this hole puncher here and just go through both layers of the leather. And then you may have to use your bead reamer to open up those holes a little bit. Once you have that, you just jump rings, jump ring it to the actual piece. And like you know, this is a really cool creative use for those spacer bars, because we've seen a lot of times these used in multi-strand designs, but here you are creating a chain. What a good idea. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Um, it's nice when you use all the same style components, because everything goes together, And the mixed too. material, mixed metals, I, I love, love the different finishes. Me too. So to um, start the stringing process then, you're just going to run two pieces of beading wire through the um, hole in the pendant. And then this makes it so it doesn't matter where you drill the hole on your pendant. Oh, okay. So, so you're you, making a totally custom bail. Yeah, because if you were trying to run a jump ring through it, like your jump ring would have to be pretty have to, big. Yeah, be a little more careful maybe where you drill the hole. Or, right. And I like how you glued that. Did you glue this? I did. Do you want to see how? It looks good. Um, to, to drill it, I just took a regular charm and cut it cut off. off the loop. And then if you want to uh, file it, you can, or you can just add some more adhesive and glue it on like that. Looks great. I like it. Um, then once you have your uh, stringing started, you can just string the sides however you want. But I wanted to show you these bead liners again because they kind of have a, a dual purpose. For large hold beads, you can also put them inside like that and right. then that tapers down the hole so they aren't like uneven on the string. Yes and fits the beading wire. Now which size beading wire are you using? You just need two strands to go through your seed beads, right? Right. So. I do I did 19 strands so it kept kind of skinny. Sure. Now then to secure it to one end of your chain that you've made, you just run it through this this is a solid ring so the um, thin wire can't sneak out, you know. And then you're going to poke it through the first crimp bead. And um, because I don't, I'm not using crimping pliers here, I'll then run these two strands through the separate strands. And you can see I've snuck a crimp bead oh, right so you crimped there it again. too. So I crimp it with flat nose pliers like this. Is that just because it's tricky to crimp with a crimping tool when you have seed beads so close? Is I've, that why? I've snapped too many um, yeah. seed beads. Um, before okay. I forget to tell you, though, you can... Um, just like you drilled the um, 
beach stones, you can also drill beach glass the oh, let's same take a way. Look. Yeah, I've got a little sample right here to show you. That looks great. Thank you. And let's take a look at your necklace too so that we can see the finished piece. And we'll have all the instructions for this on our website. So be sure to check that out. And thank you so much, Candy. We're gonna be using this drilling technique a lot. And I love, I love the way you use those bead aligners to fit inside the hole. It looks so great. Thank you. Yes, thank you. We are gonna be right back with Molly Shaler. I'm here with designer Molly Shaler, and today we're talking about using some bold elements in your designs. And Molly, you have a great idea for working in statement. Well, thank you. Basically, this is the necklace I made, and it uses multiple strands, which really makes a great deal of a statement with the necklace. Bold colors, as well as an interesting um, way to connect different types of elements. So on the side here, we have um, the clasp, which is connected with a little link to some chain, and then we use um, basically a loop here with seed beads and a crimp to connect this large Semi-precious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are really pretty too, and I love that hot color. Yeah, it's fun to work with. For sure. So you're going to show us just a few of the techniques that we need, and the complete pattern will be on the website. Definitely. So where do you want to start? With the spacer bars? Yes, th there are so many different spacer bars around, and as you can probably see on this one, that um, they have multiple holes, which are great for multiple strands, and then some of them are decorative like this, and others are less substantial but are work really well um, paired and worked throughout the piece. And then some have large holes and um, work well just as, as like little bits and pieces within the design. So with these, I decided that I would go ahead and I think I'm going to start with these really beautiful large ovals right here. And I'll show you how to connect the chain links to the rest of your necklace. Okay. So what I've done, is actually I'm going to put a bead stopper on here, is you're going to take and let's start with, with our crimp bead and then I'll just string a few of these seed beads. Um, they're more on the necklace, but you could string, and just enough to go around that first link of the chain that you're using. I like the way that gives your wire a textured effect. So you're bringing in some of the colors from the rest mm -hmm. of the necklace and you're covering it up. Probably makes it a little bit more durable too. It does, it gives it a lot more um, visual impact as well as structural impact, or structural um, strength. I guess would be the better word there. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cozy that bead, crimp tube actually, up around there. So I've passed through, I'll go ahead and I'll crimp it. So you make it an oval, then you do the second notch on the pliers and then fold. the outer notch to yep. fold it over. And then you've got a nice start there for Great. your necklace. And then I went ahead and I thought I would go ahead and put couple beads on. I'm going to do a trim. And this is your tang tangerine tango the necklace. Tangerine tango green, necklace. Tan tangerine colors. Yeah, I love how it's um, citrusy and warm, but it doesn't just stick with the oranges and the peaches. I like also using um, the warm purples and the warm reds to kind of coordinate without being too matchy-matchy. Right, and you have a huge mixture of materials because you've got those shell beads and then stone that you're using and mm -hmm. some glass. And then all you need to do at this point, once you've got your little, that the bit that was getting you to the main part of the necklace that has the multiple strands, I just would pass through one of these. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and show us how bars. you're going to crimp that. And this actually, on these I've been flattening because there are significantly large holes in these. Oh, so if you crimped it, it would just fall through. I think it would fall through. So I used the largest crimp tubes that are available and I strung one on. Yeah, you know, crimping with the chain nose pliers is extreme circumstances only, it is. right? Yeah, it's one of those things, and I often would actually put a drop of glue on there to hold it oh, that's to a make good idea. sure. But I just I kind of hold it close and then I squeeze. And actually, if you squeeze down at this part of your plier, you get a lot better. Um, yeah, just making sure torque. that the pliers don't cut through your wire there. Yeah, that's and then and then you just trim. And then what I love about the way that you did this is so you're using both sides of the spacer bar because you have the clasp coming out from one side with your big bead mm -hmm. and then you're stringing passing through the other side. Yep. 
That is clever. And then all you do, um, once you actually do the same type of connection with the crimp, and pass through that way, and then back up through the second spacer, spacer bar um, with all the coordinating beads. Sure. So um, this strand right here is this nice warm purple, but um, I like to make necklaces that sometimes aren't perfectly symmetrical. Right. So what I do is I like to bring out my bowls and I pull a few strands of beads that I kind of like together. And in this bowl here, I was going for the peach and the tangerine, 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 and um, some hot pinks. And this one incorporates some of those colors, but it also incorporates these large red helixes and these really pretty faceted ovals and a couple of these nice warm purples as well. So it coordinates without completely matching and it's bold with different types of beads and different cuts of beads as well. Right, shape, color, you've got it all. Thank you. Yeah, and this is another example of mixing colors together. Mm -hmm. This one I wanted a cooler color palette and instead of using spacer bars, I used um, some three to one connectors. So up here on the sides. Mm -hmm. And those are earring dangles, they can also yep. be multiple strand connectors. Yeah, they're great for chandelier earrings. Yeah, and anytime you want to make this multi-strand focal section, that's a mm -hmm. great way to do it. I love this the giant beads on the side. Yeah. I think that's a great effect. And it uses really tiny seed beads to make a similar type of connection on the sides up to the chain. Oh, let's see if we can turn it. But yeah, so there's just a little bitty, and it's it's not as much of a strong part of the design, but it's something that adds a little bit of something to it. Yeah, the hand of the maker, I yes. like that. Yeah. And on your white necklace over here, it looks like you have some, um, these are sliders. Yeah, are those are sliders. Connectors. They've actually, they've got pathways through for two, um, pa or two pieces of wire to pass through. And instead, and then, then I made a, um, I used an eye pin to create a, a space to attach multiple strands across there, even though they're just two loops there's an eye pin that gives you a space onto which to attach those multiple strands. Yeah, so you can really use these connectors in a lot of different ways. Oh yeah, they're very versatile. Combinations of techniques, mm -hmm. love it. Thank All you. All right, well we will be right back with Wyatt. I'm here with wire expert and jewelry designer Wyatt White from Beadalon. He's also the education director and the inventor of these pliers. Yeah, these pliers are, were, a surprise, um, but they work and we're really happy about that. So the plier itself is um, uh, for two sizes of square wire. Uh, this particular one that I have here, if you can see at the end, it says 20 gauge and the other side's 21. That means that this plunger, this part right here, is the size of 20 gauge square wire on this side and 21 gauge square wire on the other side. So that makes it really easy for banding. It They're does. Specifically for banding. What it does is it will, you bend a piece of half round wire in this, the size that you're gonna band the square wire. Let's take a look at what half round wire looks like just for people who aren't sure. familiar with the shape. Half round wire is here and it's basically a round wire that's cut in half. Okay. And then the square wire of course is all square all the way around, equal, equal sides. So these are the shapes of wire that you use for precision banding. Yes. A lot of people will use square wire to band with, and you can use square wire on these pliers, but you can only use the thinner gauges, 22 and 24 gauge square wire. Okay. Um, but it's a little more difficult to do that, so for people that are just getting started, I always say start with square and half round. All right. So you take a piece of half round wire. In this case, we're using 20 gauge. You can use any of 20, 21, or 22 gauge in the banding pliers. And we're gonna be banding 20 gauge square. So we're gonna take our plier, open it up, and we're gonna place the flat side up. I need my optics, optics so that I can see when I do this though. So again, we're gonna take the flat side up and we're going to place that right across there. And when we bend this, we are just gonna depress, and that puts the perfect double right angle on this piece of half round wire. Okay, I think the first time you showed us how to do this technique, you did it by making two right angles. This is so much Correct. easier. This is so much easier because now that is sized specifically for our square wire. So then you just place it right inside your... Right, you just place these across here. And then hold with my curved chain nose. And we're gonna hold it nice and tight and you pull this down and you pull this one up. 
and that gives you a nice tight first band which is totally key to doing this properly. So this is the side that, had, that the banding pliers were used on. And that, that gives you the perfect size with the two right angles to snug down to work against, against the, the, the half front wire. Then each time you make a wrap, you're gonna go through and tighten it. Then pull this down and tighten. And push that over and tighten. So what you end up with is you have your, um, your, your banded portion, and then you're going to bend the two longer uh, tips up. Now this is a very, very easy uh, uh, way to, to capture a stone. We're going to have three prongs, and then the top two, which is a, long, a little bit longer piece. Um, once you have that done, then you're going to spread the three parts out just like I've done here. Okay. So this is gonna be where you're gonna set your stone. All right, and we're talking about bold elements. There's some yes, bold elements. Yes, we're, we've, got, we've got something that's a little bit uh, large. Yes. We, we love to have large sparkly things. <laughs> Definitely. And what I do on this particular thing is I'll place this right in the center so you can then hold this down. Okay. And then start at one side and then come directly across from it and pull that straight up. And then again, working from opposite sides, do the same thing. And what you want is you want something like this when you get finished. If you notice, you probably can't see, but this stone is pretty well set in here. Oh, yeah. Once you get to this point, then you want to take flush cutters. And depending on how you want your prongs to look, you're going to come through here and hopefully cut all of these at about the same length, being very careful with what you're doing with the... Um, the, the cut pieces. Right. And then do you use around. round nose pliers? Um, on this particular one, I am going to use round nose pliers. Because that gives you a nice, uh, you want to get rid of the, the sharp edge that's on the end when you do the, the flush cut. Because yeah. you don't want to have anything that's too sharp left over. Right. Even if you don't like the person that you're making this for, you still want it to be <laughs> nice and soft. Well, and this is a great way to set any size or shape of stone because you could set those prongs in different places to hold this stone in place. Right. This particular one has the, the prongs sort of curled under and then flattened. This one, they're going to stay up. Okay. So I'm going to show you both of those on this one. So this one will have the flat on one side and then the curled under on the other side. Let me clean up just a little bit here. So with this, I have to get back in here. You want to always keep the square wire, you want to, want to be able to twist this on the square wire. So I'm just going to hold it and just turn this like so until that turns under. Re-grab, turn it under just a little bit more. Yep. And then normally I would do the opposite on the other side. So because I'm going to do this a little bit differently, I'm going to twist this one to the side. So I'm going to go to the square to the side and then twist that around. Just to give you an idea of what it would look. Right, just so you can see the, the two different ways. Okay, so you would do that on each one, of course, making sure that it's still the stone is remaining seated. How right. do you make the bale? The bale is um, another fun thing, and, and there's so many different ways to make a bale. I think we, we showed them on, um, uh, the, the DVD has some bale, and we also showed some on another one. Right. What you can do, this one I just used the bale making pliers and I just wrapped the two wires around this. So then you could put a chain or whatever you, whatever you want in there. What we're gonna do with this one, again, clean up a little bit, um, we're gonna just take and bend this forward so that our bale is, is up, and you want it so that it'll hang properly. So you can distribute the weight a little bit, just push this forward, and then we're gonna take this portion about there. Now, what the bale making pliers allows you to do is to get a nice, good square wrap so that it stays. You couldn't do that on the um, round nose pliers because you've got that tapered effect going oh, on. Oh, right. This is These, a cylindrical. Right. This, this comes out just absolutely straight. That um, makes sense. It's still a little bit wonky here, but you can, you can always adjust that. 
Yeah, now how do you finish the ends of your bale then? Well, what, I'm, what I'd like to do on this one is just then cut them to the same size. Again, watching what you do with those. And since this is just um, a, a pretty simple way to do it, you can grab and use the other side this time and just curve these up like so. Yeah. To just kind of finish them off. And then you can snap that. Well, I'm going to have to use. So you have a little hook. Sort of, yeah, sort of a little hook so that this could go onto an existing strand of beads. Oh, perfect. It's inter or, interchangeable. Mm -hmm. Well, when you have the right tools, this makes it so much easier. It really does. Yes. You, you absolutely must have the tools. And again, the banding pliers help you to um, create that. Create the back. And this is a very easy method to start to set stones. Oh, this is perfect. Thank you so much, Wyatt. This is great. You're welcome. Stay tuned next week as we add another style to our designer file. Learn about creating drama on the next Beads, Bubbles, and Jewels. Instructions for today's projects, plus other ideas, techniques, and information are available on the web at beadsbobblesandjewels.com. Today's show is number 1702. If you enjoyed today's show and want to see more projects and great guests, you can order a DVD set of the entire Beads, Bobbles, and Jewels series 1700. All 13 episodes plus bonus content featuring soldering techniques with Kate Richborg and Spiral Herringbone with Gene Campbell, only available in this DVD set. Order at beadsbobblesandjewels.com for $29.99 plus shipping and handling. Don't miss a single episode and get these bonus projects. Beads, Bobbles, and Jewels has been brought to you in part by Beading Daily, your jewelry making resource for how-to projects, books, magazines, DVDs, events, and online learning. Beadingdaily.com. Beadalon, a manufacturer of flexible bead stringing wires, memory wire, artistic wire, stringing materials, innovative findings, and tools to help you fashion your own jewelry. Beadalon.com. Create your style with Swarovski Elements. EKSuccessBrands.com forward slash create your style with Swarovski elements. Halcraft, jewelry component manufacturer. Halcraft.com. Jewel School, a division of jewelry television. JTV.com slash Jewel School. TierraCast, define your design with metal. TierraCast.com.